Greetings, and welcome to episode 65. In today's episode, we'll be talking about survival and how we're constantly living in a state of fight or flight and how it's in this day and age should be unnecessary. But I just some things it has to do with work and I, where I work, you're like really like face to face with the gritty truth of our society. And I'll get into that and we'll discuss a little bit more. But uh, yeah, if you're ready, let's get started. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, survival. Why are we still living in a constant state of survival? It's, it's worse than... I believe the society we live in now is worse than let's say if we had no society to speak of if it was just people living in clustered groups across the land I think it would be less dangerous to live like that than it is to live the way we live in that constant state of fight or flight uh, and those that don't live in that state it, everything that happens to them comes as a shock like I can't believe that happened to me and then you have those that have their defenses up constantly and they're constantly on the lookout for these things and it just certain things just shouldn't happen certain things just shouldn't be a part of our society and you start to see where it comes from and I'd like to say well money it's not money it's it's people and I believe it's the fact that we live too closely grouped together. It is economic disparity between the classes. There shouldn't be classes, for one. It's almost as though they want there to be crime and homelessness. As kind of a, you don't want to end up like that. You don't want that to happen. It's like they create the problem so they can create the solution and not so much the homelessness but the crime I work in a very very bad neighborhood and it just seems to me that if things were handled just a slightly differently oh well, okay it wouldn't be slightly it'd be pretty much it'd be a dramatic shift in policy in economic policy in the way money is distributed to the people and uh, what do you call it the opportunities afforded to certain classes of people it's just it sits the way it sits now the lower down the economic spectrum you go people are more willing to do whatever it takes to get their bills paid and if that means they're gonna go rob and steal sell drugs uh, what have you they're gonna do that well that's crime well that justifies having a police force and so on and so on and, and it snowballs from there pardon me yes I know nasty habit and I'm getting to the end of that habit but bear with me I smoke you just deal with that <laughs> I apologize if you don't like that I smoke stick around it six months more tops we were supposed to already have quit long story short we didn't anyway <laughs> uh, just what I see there's a lot of homeless in the area where I work and some of these people are just recently homeless and I've been homeless I know how easy it is to one day have a roof and the next day not have a roof I know how easy that is I know how easy it is to get back out of that it's not that easy at all because once you've lost your place to live and God forbid your job also it's harder than people think to get out of that and when it happened to me when I became homeless 
I didn't know they had all these programs in place that could help get me back out of being homeless. I had did it by myself, just strength of will and determination. Uh, but something I've noticed, something that's like a running, recurring theme in the, the homeless people I've met just in the last six months and why it was so much easier for me to get out of it. And, and, and remember, I said it wasn't easy. So the recurring theme is drug addiction, whether it be alcoholism or some narcotic, some other narcotic. And I don't mean weed. I've never seen a homeless person that's only strung out on weed. Never. Never once. We're talking hard drugs. Meth, heroin, cocaine. And yes, you get the hardcore alcoholics. I didn't have to fight that. The only thing I had to fight was that feeling of uh, self, lack of self-respect, my dignity diminishing on a daily basis, getting less and less and less and less. That feeling of shame and embarrassment that you've lost everything. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. But like I said, I didn't have the added bonus of addiction to, to struggle with. And it just seems like no one ever wants to talk about this. They only want to say feed the hungry. And uh, the assistant, I spoke with the assistant district attorney for the area I live in. And uh, she just happened to come in one day and we were talking about homeless people. And she told me. And I was trying to argue, and this is why, and it took a while, but she ended up proving me wrong without lifting a finger. I haven't spoken to her since. She just happened to come in for gas. We were talking about the homeless. And she told me she has personally set up programs that can get any person off the street. These programs are completely 100% free. They had this big to-do where they invited all the homeless down to come get started and get back into the game. And nobody showed up, she said. Nobody. Get you some food. Get you some clothes. Get you a roof. Get you a job. Nobody showed up. And I was shocked when she said that. But then the more I see of these homeless people, And I don't mean the people living at or below the poverty level and just don't have cars and come in on bicycles. I mean homeless, where their life is in a backpack or their life is in a shopping cart and their whole existence is its a daily nomadic ritual that they perform where at this time of day they're at this part of the city, at this time of the day they go to this part of the city and so on and so forth. It's... I, I don't know how to say it, but their predicament causes them shame. So they don't feel the shame anymore. They fall deeper into their addiction, which causes them more shame. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a never-ending circular argument. I'm an addict because I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed because I'm an addict. I'm an addict because I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed because I'm an addict. And so because of that, they never get out of their situation. Like I said, when I was homeless, I didn't have that added bonus. But even though I'm not there anymore, I still find myself living in that constant fight or flight. I mean, I know for a fact, because of the, the life I've lived, that the safety is an illusion. You, you're only as safe as you think you are. Unless you own a firearm or some other type of weapon, uh, uh, no martial arts. Uh, you know, if you don't know how to defend yourself, you're not as safe as you think you are. Because the, the police are 20 minutes away. A lot can happen in 20 minutes. A lot can happen in 60 seconds. You would be surprised what can happen in 60 seconds. So this constant state of survival, the homeless people don't have that. Not to the degree that we do. They're looking at their next meal. 
we're looking at rent, bills, car payment, kids got dentist appointment, wife's got to go see the doctor. You know, that's what we're looking at from from uh, at or above the poverty level. But when you're homeless, you don't have none of that. All you're worried about is getting your next fixed and getting something to eat. And maybe when it gets cold, getting a hotel room. It's funny that I see that fight or flight survival instinct less in homeless people than I do in people that have a life. You shun a homeless person for being a little bit more forthcoming in their gesture to stand on the corner and ask you, hey, I need a couple bucks. Hey, pocket, spare pocket change, anything you got. But how many times have you been stabbed in the back so someone else could get ahead? How many times have you stabbed someone in the back so you could get ahead? I mean, this isn't high school. At this stage of the game, we destroy people's lives when we do that shit. Is it that a homeless person has less to lose? And don't get me wrong, because I've seen both sides of the argument. I've seen my side of the argument, which is they just need help, which and there are those out there that would, would do anything to get back into the game. And that's and not all not all of them are addicts. But then you have the ones that they wear their homelessness as a badge. And this is their survival technique. They wear it as a badge, and if you don't cater to their homelessness, you're worthless. And it just, and I caught someone doing it one day. He was, well, you're, you're just treating me like I'm homeless. And I was like, no, you're treating me like you're homeless. Because I've had, I know I have several homeless people I come in contact with on a, almost on a daily basis. But they don't interact with me like they're homeless. They interact with me like they're human. Like they're grown men or women just trying to get through the day just like me. And then you get the other ones that are homeless. And they want you to know they're homeless. They want you to feel sorry for them. Asked once, don't you have any compassion? Sure, my compassion isn't found in my wallet. I do not pity nor envy you. I don't know how you ended up in this position. You could deserve every minute of this. I don't know. I don't know why you choose not to get out of it. But what I do know is that if you are choosing to disassociate with society, it is not my place to pay for your existence. That's just like, I don't want to pay to live in this apartment, but can I crash at your place? No, no you cannot. <laughs> And no, they're not all like that. And their survival instinct has nothing to do with the same things that we have our survival instinct about. Our, it, 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 their problems are so vastly re removed from what we see as survival. What we see as, oh, get the Brent pig, uh, uh, you know, have a little bit extra. Oh, the cable bill. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're all big on the extras. And we call that survival. And when I look at it, I'm like, well, why do we have this, this fight or flight instinct that's constantly in like an overdrive when all we're really trying to do is maintain having extras? We're not trying to maintain a roof. We're not trying to maintain, a, you know, a vehicle, you know, transportation to and fro. What we're really after is the extras. We gotta have that Wi-Fi. We gotta have that beer and fridge. We gotta have uh, something to show off to our friends. This creates in us survival instinct, really. When the people out there that are really just trying to survive don't have that deep-seated survival instinct on that same level, on that level where they would kill. People kill over this stuff, over material wealth. And granted, I've talked to a few of them. They've been beat up and robbed. I'm like, 
thinking, well, what could you have possibly had that someone would beat you up for? Probably a little bit of money. Maybe they had a little bit of drugs or some booze. The material stuff. But getting robbed is less likely to happen to one of them than it is to happen to one of us. Because they don't have anything to steal. So they don't have that survival instinct on the same level. Because we have the survival instinct to go out and get it. But then once you've got it, you got to keep it. you got to lock your doors. you got to lock your windows. you got to make sure nobody's in your place. Or nobody has an extra key or any of that. I hope they don't steal my car. I hope they don't go through and steal stuff out of my car. Why is it we are more cutthroat on what's supposed to be a civilized level than people that have nothing and you would think they would go and kill for it? They don't see that the thing is they wouldn't go out and kill for a sandwich. They might need some heroin, they might need some cocaine, some meth, they might do some crime for that, but not for a roof, not for food. Think about that. And we'll do some, some backhanded shit to keep the cable bill on. To, so we don't go without our, 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 our internet, our social media. Can't live without that. That fight or flight is unnecessary, but it's fostered. It's, a, it's, it's like they nurture it through the media. Through the news, through social media, it's fostered. Hey, look what I got. Hey, look what I got. Everyone wants something new and better and bigger. Well, you got to get it somehow, right? And somehow, sometimes getting that better job position means I got to stab someone in the back to get it. Or I got to when I do get that position I gotta spend the rest of the time looking over my shoulder because someone might be coming up to get it and imagine if you had to stab ten people in the back to get where you're at and someone now wants your job what do you think is gonna happen to you you don't see that in the homeless people this please this punch you gave him a cigarette <laughs> It is without a doubt an unnecessary part of the human condition. And I don't for the life of me understand why it's even part of our society. Why they say, well, people need incentives to work. I get that. I get that. I just don't understand why everything has to be so expensive as to make people start thinking that they'd be willing to kill or injure someone to get something they want. It's like a sense of entitlement that's reinforced by the sheer fact that everybody else, everybody else has it, like your kids, everybody else has one. And somehow that entitles you to have one by any means. Survival. That's not surviving. What I'm doing is not surviving. This isn't survival. What those homeless people do, that's survival. They say it's survival of the fittest. No, being underhanded and backstabby, that's not survival. That's being a douchebag. Survival is when I've lived in small towns. I'll tell you what survival is. Survival is when the town will come together because one family slips up and the town comes together to hold their heads, help hold their heads above water. That's survival. And all you're doing is changing the meaning a little bit. It's not gain by any means necessary. It's helping the next man survive. And why is it we won't help a person until they've hit rock bottom and are begging on the corner? 
When a person needs help, nobody fucking listens until they're homeless. And then it's too late. I don't need your help now. Makes me angry. <laughs> because we've created this. We've allowed this travesty to continue for how long? How long have we lived like this? We shouldn't be living like this. This is a fact. Fact. There is too much, too many resources, too many things out there available for everybody. That everything should cost, the cost should be set so that people are more cutthroat and people do have a fight or flight mechanisms it's in constant overdrive constant overdrive gotta watch your back someone might want your job gotta watch your back someone might want your stuff it's not enough just to have and enjoy it you gotta have more than the next guy you have to have the better things than the next guy I'd please as punch if I got a bicycle today I don't need a nice sports car now, don't get me wrong. There are cars I would want to drive. I have my dream car, my dream motorcycle, my dream house, same as the next guy. But I'm not going to knock anyone down to get it. You'll never catch me at Black Friday. Just watching that on, on a video is enough to make me disgusted to be human. Because that's how we live. The only reason why we're not knocking each other down on a regular basis is because we don't come in that, to that close proximity to one another on a daily basis. Just once or twice a year. But when it happens, good God, look out. I mean, I've seen some of those Black Friday videos where... They'll knock down women, children, people get trampled. And this is the mentality we live with. That I gotta get mine, gotta get mine. Fight or flight. Just leads me to think that people are inherently selfish and greedy. And have the nerve to point the finger at somebody else when something goes wrong. It's the government. It's the, No, it's your greedy ass. Look in the mirror. Now, I'm not saying the government is innocent. What I'm saying is the pot can't call the kettle black. Why can I speak on it? Because I don't participate in shopping as a sport. I don't keep up with the Joneses. I get what I need to get through it. When I need to get through it. Not because, oh, it just came out. If you don't get it now, you're nobody. Well, I'll get it later because I'm okay with being nobody. <laughs> Me and my crystal, my wife and my kids. Well, I can't really even add my kids because my kids are all about getting the next thing. Oh, it's good. To get yeah, my friends got it. Well, go play with your friends' toys then. <laughs> oh, I wonder if I was ever like that when I was a kid. I think I was to an extent, but I don't think it ever got to me so bad that. that I would beat someone up for their stuff or threaten their life or trample them over I mean I would be dishonest if I said I'd never stolen anything but that was more of a spur of the moment it's not like I planned a career in theft it was more of a hey I saw something I wanted and I took it I stole a bike once 
wasn't even a fancy bike wasn't something you'd show off to your friends oh look what I got it was it was a conveyance it got me from point A to point B so I don't understand I don't understand We live in what's supposed to be a civilized society. We should have no use for mechanisms that wild animals use or have in place. And they need these things to survive. We don't need this to survive anymore. We don't have to hunt for our food anymore. We go and get jobs and we buy our stuff at the supermarket. We don't even have to farm anymore for the vegetarians because they can go to the farmer's market if they like their organics or they can go to the supermarket if they don't mind GMOs. Either way, that survival instinct, it should pretty much be dead in us. Unless for some unheard of reason, they're trying to purposely foster the spirit of competition so that we're constantly at each other's throats for whatever reason for or should I say for one reason or another I mean they it's all the way down through all right down to the entertainment to your to your to the taste great less filling Ford Chevy Steelers Cowboys it's in every aspect of our life Motorola Verizon I think more I guess Motorola makes the phones they don't actually have service but you get the point it's in everything I got the iPhone 5 well, shit, why don't you just buy a big screen TV? It's just the same fucking thing. <laughs> People say, well, how come you don't have a giant, big-ass fucking phone? I have a laptop, dude, for real, and a flip phone. <laughs> if I wanted to carry around a laptop, I'd just carry around my damn laptop. <laughs> It's getting hot in here, starting to sweat. But you see what I'm talking about. I know if you just took a second and just look at any part of your life, you'd see, you'd see it. There's no reason to have a phone that can do everything but make pancakes. I just, I don't, I guess I don't get it. Well, if I didn't have a laptop, or any other kind of computing device, yes, I would probably have a great big ass smartphone. But I have a laptop. So I don't need it. I have a little flip phone for making phone calls. See? This is me. Right here. Little flip phone. Oh, but uh, uh, if look, my phone does what it's supposed to do. It sends and receives phone calls and text messages. But you can't play games. On it. Why do I need to play games on it? My life isn't so unfulfilled that my phone has to do sixty-four thousand different things. But I mean, so you, well, my phone it'll rub your nuts and make pancakes. Well, good for you. You sit down and enjoy your pancakes. <laughs> I just want a phone. <laughs> and it's with everything. People will get beat up, shot, killed over some, some electronics like that. Not like mine. No one's going to beat me up for mine. They'd probably feel bad and give me their phone. <laughs> But I don't care about that stuff. I don't care about the next big thing. When I see the next big thing, if I want it, it's because I need it for some reason or another. There are certain things I like to do, so I need a more powerful computer than the laptop I have. I'm a gamer.
so I need a better computer. Not because it's the next best thing, but because the stringent requirements of the games I want to play require that I have a more powerful computer. That's it. Not trying to keep up with the Joneses. I don't give a shit what the Joneses have. I don't care. My sense of survival has nothing to do with the acquisition of wealth and material, material possession. What it does have to do with is defending myself and the people I love from the people that would steal whatever limited wealth I have accumulated. But that's, this is just something I wanted to get off my chest. Fight or flight, survival instinct, that the people that you would think have, should have it, don't have it. Which would be, from what I've seen, the homeless people. But anyway. Hmm. Getting on past the 30 minute mark, so I'm going to go ahead and call it. Oh, if you've liked this episode... If you would like this, if you have enjoyed, sorry, if you have enjoyed this episode, please click the like button. You can favorite it if you want. Go ahead and leave comments down below because this is supposed to be a discussion. Tell me what you see. Tell me what you think. But if you would like to keep coming back and getting more information, then go ahead, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Because we already know you like the sound of my voice. That's why you keep coming back. <laughs> Anyway, until next time, you hang in there. <laughs>